Yo, what's up, sleepers? It's your boy, Ed Bedhead, and today we cover the best selling artist slash band of all time. Now, for this review, I cover the 12 original Beatles albums. Check out part one of my review if you want to see the first six. I will not be covering any remixes or deluxe versions of these albums. I will, however, cover the remastered versions because that's what was available on Spotify. Now that we got the rules out of the way, let's rock. So the seventh Beatles album was released August 5th of 1966. It was entitled Revolver. It is still considered to be one of the greatest and most innovative albums of all time. The band continued to experiment with new technology and sounds that were available then. What's more, all the band members put an equal amount of work and creativity into this album. And this is when some critics consider to be the start of their psychedelic period. Fortunately, the band had a lot of free time to actually be able to work on this album. They were able to stray away from their normal busy schedules of touring and concerts and interviews and everything else that was going on in their lives. And what resulted was an album of a mix of genres. You got pop sounds, you got rock sounds, you got psychedelic sounds, it's just, it's a bunch of things but Altogether, it sounds really good. This is the album we get iconic songs such as Yellow Submarine and Eleanor Rigby. However, it was after this album that the band announced their retirement from touring. And it's reasonably so, since the band could hardly hear themselves over the constant screaming of fans live in concert. And there is a little bit more bad news that happened. So the band did get into a little bit of controversy during this time. So, Lennon had claimed that the band was more popular than Jesus. Joke or not, taken out of context or not, conservative America didn't take that very lightly. Regardless, the band would top charts for many weeks straight. I truly enjoy this album. It's got that unique psychedelic sound that, that makes listening to this album so much fun. I recommend this album to anyone who's curious what that genre of music sounds like. I wanted to say my favorite song on the album was Taxman, but honestly, I'm gonna have to go with the basic answer of Eleanor Rigby. It's just so hard to choose a song on this album because I think it's personally my favorite and every song on here is really good. Next we have the 8th album released by the Beatles on May 26th of 1967. It was entitled Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Yeah, it's a long title and it culturally changed the world. It even had a massive influence of the 1967 Summer of Love. They continued to push the limits on creativity and technological sounds available at the time. They even brought in orchestra and more psychedelic sound. This album came to a surprise to some who believed the band was done creating music altogether. However, no one can deny the effect it had on youth and counterculture. This album centers around a fictitious band putting on a musical show. This album can be defined as psychedelic, art, and rock. And the album quickly became one of the greatest selling albums of all time. I recommend this album for anyone who wants to get an idea of what the summer of love and 60s counterculture must have been like. My favorite song on this album was Good Morning, Good Morning. It's really catchy and it has so many unique sounds that have definitely influenced today's music. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please smash that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and comment down below on what your favorite Beatles song is. The ninth Beatles album was released on November 22nd of 1968. It goes by two names, the original title, which is The Beatles, but since it's on a plain white album cover, it's often referred to as the White Album. There are just so many different genres on this album that for simplicity's sake, that we're just gonna count it as a pop slash rock album. The band had long since secured their success and they finally had some time to enjoy their wealth and spend their free time how they wanted. However, behind the scenes, things were not so great. They had a lot of personal issues and drama that put the band at odds with each other. They would sometimes fight and bigger with each other during recording sessions. They also wanted to explore their musical abilities as solo artists. The recording of this album took place in India, which gave them a chance to get away from their home and experience a new culture to them. Once it was released, I probably don't need to mention that it topped the US and the UK charts. 
I will however mention that they were shocked and horrified when they found out Charles Manson had misinterpreted their lyrics. He bended the meaning of the lyrics to fit his cult. Sounds like it was a really rough time for the Beatles altogether. Regardless, I recommend this album to anyone who wants to experience an album where every song is like a different genre. My favorite song on this album is Your Blues. It's such an awesome rock song and I just love jamming out to it and listening to it on my radio while I'm driving. The 10th Beatles album and 4th film was called Yellow Submarine. It was released on January 13, 1969. To be honest, they cared little for this album. They were required by contract to make a fourth film and therefore an album to go along with it. However, they did have a little bit of creative control and decided on an animated style. The album did only reach third in the UK charts and second in the US charts, but the band didn't seem to mind since they had little regard for it. Thus, it was kind of met with some mixed reviews. Some have nostalgia and love this film. Others say it doesn't meet the high quality of a regular Beatles album. I think I agree with the second. This album was definitely enjoyable, but I don't see it as the same quality as the previous Beatles albums. Granted, I'm not really influenced by the Yellow Submarine film since I have never seen it. Therefore, I suppose I'd recommend this album after you've seen the film. I think my favorite song on this album was It's All Too Much. It's a psychedelic song and I think it deserves a little more attention. The 11th Beatles album was released on September 26, 1969. It was entitled Abbey Road. And some believe the Beatles seemed to have no their time together as a band was coming to an end. Therefore, they put together this masterpiece of an album. Everybody recognizes the cover photo on this album. It's still used in pop culture today. However, just like recording the White Album, the band had a lot of personal issues they were going through. This led to more bitterness between one another. But they were also able to strengthen their skills as musicians. They were able to be very innovative on this album even though they weren't always working on it together. Strangely enough, this is also when the conspiracy that Paul McCartney was dead began. The genre of this album is definitely more rock, which I love. Therefore, I recommend this album to any rock fans who are looking for some of the Beatles' best work. They again topped US and UK charts with this album. It may come as no surprise to some of you, but my favorite song on the album is Come Together. It's the most popular song on this album and rightfully so. It has a cool rock sound mixed with a little bit of psychedelic. I will admit though, some of the lyrics do sound a bit silly. The final and 12th Beatles album to be released came out on May 8th, 1970, almost a month after the band had announced they had broken up. The album was called Let It Be, and I guess all good things must eventually come to an end. Although the album did top US and UK charts, some critics did have a negative review to give on this album. However, I really enjoy it because just like the previous album, it's kind of more of a rock genre to it. And once again, during the production of this album, there was a lot of personal issues and drama going on with the band. This left a strange feeling on their final album as, as when recording it, they were sometimes at odds with each other. The music is so great and I love these songs. My favorite song on the album was I, Me, Mine. It's got such a cool vibe that has the passion I love from Beatles rock song. The legacy of the Beatles is one that no one has ever or maybe even will ever take the crown from. They earned their place in not just music history but history altogether. Their iconic music still finds its way into modern media and modern music today. No one can deny the Beatles lasting effects and I do genuinely love this band. Even if you've never listened to a Beatles song, I recommend giving it a fair shot. You may just fall in love with them just as so many other millions of people have. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button, comment down below on what your favorite Beatles album and subscribe so you can stay tuned whenever a new video comes out. That's all I have for you guys today. Peace.